There's a lot of speculation about the future of blockchain technology and what it's going to look like. There's a lot of talk about the multi-chain future, where there will be all these different blockchains that coexist and that people use day to day to settle value and power the next generation of financial applications, gaming, NFTs, Web 3.0, you name it. So if that's true, you know, what does it look like and how does it work? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about the future of the multi chain world and what I think it's going to look like. And so to explain this, I guess I'll just start off by saying the world already is multi chain. I mean, we have multiple blockchains out there. We have Bitcoin, we got Ethereum, we got a bunch of different layer one smart contract platforms coming on the scene trying to capture market share. So the world already is multi chain. So the real question is, what does the future look like for the multi chain world? So in order to answer this question, you know, you really have to keep an open mind. Nobody knows exactly what the future is going to look like, but you have to do your best to try to formulate an opinion based upon a really solid set of assumptions that have logical conclusions, but then, you know, adjust that view over time as you, you know, come across new convincing information. And so also when we're talking about the multi-chain world. I'm not so much going to talk about, you know, Bitcoin versus other blockchains. So blockchains that actually support smart contracts that can have arbitrary programs written on them, because this is where a lot of, you know, the competition and the lack of clarification is. So I'm talking about blockchains like, you know, Ethereum, Solana, Lana, Cardano, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, and the list goes on and on. So there's so many different, you know, smart contract platforms out there. So what's the future going to look like for these? Well, I think there's a misconception about what people think the multi-chain world is going to look like in the future. I think a lot of people, when they say this, they envision one of two things. They envision a world where, you know, you have a, a, a pie where everybody has a rough, you know, equal share of that pie. That like, you know, this blockchain takes up 10% of the activity. This blockchain takes up that 10% of the activity. Or that, you know, whatever smart contract platform they're betting on is just going to be a moonshot and it's going to dethrone the king or maybe some other smart contract platform to gain dominance. Well, I think a lot of people actually have misconceptions about what's going to happen here. And so I want to talk about those one by one and tell you what I think the future is going to look like. So the first misconception is that, you know, uh, all these blockchains will roughly have equal usage. Well, I don't think that's actually going to be the case. And here's why. You don't really see, tend to see these, um, you know, distributions play out in nature. You tend to see a concentration of activity around a handful of things or maybe even just one thing. I think that also stands to reason for uh, smart contract platforms as well. So let me actually tell you why I think that. One of the things that gives blockchains value in the first place is the network effect. So a place where a lot of value is created, where there's lots of different users, there's lots of different liquidity, and this network effect diminishes actually as you spread it across multiple blockchains. And it also takes a tremendous amount of effort and resources to accomplish this in the first place. And these gains are actually compounding as this network effect gets stronger. And so we already have certain smart contract platforms that are having an advantage in this regard, and it becomes really hard to compete with them as, you know, this space moves forward. And the other big reason why I think, you know, we're not going to see an equal share across a bazillion different blockchains is because at the end of the day, you don't really want to switch across between everything. You don't want to be jumping around from thing to thing for everyday use cases. You typically just want to stick in one spot. So if we're not going to see, you know, all the blockchain activity and value just completely evenly distributed across a bazillion different blockchains, then what's likely to happen? Well, I think that we're going to see, you know, likely one, maybe two, maybe three platforms become the big leaders. And still, it's likely to have one thing that takes a majority position. And then you'll likely have, you know, a lot of these other ones kind of fighting for the smaller positions. And some of them might actually die off completely. So of the existing picks right now, who do I think are strong contenders to occupy those, you know, places? So, you know, if you've been watching this channel before, it's probably no surprise to you that I think that Ethereum, you know, is likely to maintain its position as the number one smart contract track platform. It currently is right now. And so it has all this momentum going for it. And it has all that network effect like I talked about before. But let's say that, you know, another chain starts to pick up, you know, pace and also gain network effect and adoption, you know, maybe uh, because of the fee problem that's happening on Ethereum right now that somebody else actually gains a significant amount of adoption. So, you know, could that, you know, potentially uh, change the story here? Well, I still expect Ethereum to maintain dominance here because of its value of decentralization and security. So let me explain what I mean by that. So anytime that you're, you know, working with a blockchain and trying to make it very useful, you're always at tension with these three things: scalability, decentralization, and security. This is known as the scale scalability. This is known as the scalability trilemma. At the end of the day, you're always trying to find the best trade-off that you can between these three things. And there's no ever any perfect solution. And a lot of the other layer ones that pop up make significant compromises in one of these categories 
categories. And Ethereum still has a really strong edge in terms of decentralization security and also network effect on top of that. So why is that important? Because some people will say, well, hey, the end users don't actually care about like decentralization. Look at people just going chasing in gains in these, you know, wildly speculative, insecure environments. So that's true. There are a lot of people who don't care about it. But let's look at the actual use cases where people are going to care about decentralization. So anytime that you're securing a significant amount of value, let's say something over, you know, $10 million, then totally going to value decentralization and security, which Ethereum has a significant advantage on and also this network effect like I was talking about before. And so the total addressable market of value that can be settled on a platform like this is a lot bigger than some of these other sort of smaller use cases by comparison. Okay. So let's say that some other environment basically is attracting people who are getting away from high fees. Okay, so what happens when basically you fill up a blockchain with a bunch of really low value transactions? Then that's going to contribute to state bloat on that blockchain. It's also going to result in less probably total value actually set on that blockchain because the people who are highly valued decentralization is probably staying somewhere else. And the total addressable market for things that Ethereum will be good at in the long term, you know, settling large amounts of value is, is insanely big. So Ethereum would be a very strong candidate for future activity coming on the blockchain where large amounts of value is needed to be settled. So if we actually move into a world where we're doing things like settling intellectual property on a blockchain, you know, settling deeds to houses, settling derivatives, the total addressable market for these types of things is massive compared to maybe smaller time DeFi players that you'd have to add together to get some large sum or maybe even just like gaming. Sure, these all can be multi-trillion dollar industries, but the things that I'm talking about can be, you know, upwards in the quadrillions of value. And also decentralization is really going to matter whenever regulators decide to step in. I mean, we're already starting to see this with, you know, regulatory pushback on Uniswap, for example. So you could, of course, you know, do something about people who created Uniswap, but once the app's out there on the network, it's kind of out there and you can't actually sit on the network that's running it. Okay, so if you have a chain where there's a concentration of validators and let's say whatever jurisdiction you operate the validator in could shut you down, then that could completely compromise the security of that network. Or even worse, you know, what if a regulator comes in and decides that, you know, you can now somehow coerce the controllers of the chain to censor an application in some way. Then if users sort of get rug pulled in that way, they're going to have to really learn that lesson the hard way and they're actually going to value decentralization. And so that's why I think Ethereum has a really strong contender for the number one spot. But let's talk about, you know, what could potentially happen with the second or third slots if they are all significant. So it's really hard to say. I mean, I think it's very impressive what's happening in the Solana ecosystem. It's developed really rapidly. It also has a lot of network effect and momentum growing for it. It's kind of taking a different approach and philosophy and it seems to be like it's doing well. But ultimately, it's too early to tell, you know, how that's going to fare versus some other environment. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of what's going to happen is these other layer ones are going to be competing with one another rather than, you know, really trying to capture that number one position. And so the next misconception about the multi-chain future is that it's zero sum. So basically, that means in order for somebody else to succeed, that somebody else has to fail. Or uh, you could think about this as like a winner-take-all strategy. So that's not necessarily true. You know, we can see something like Solana or rise to prominence without, you know, Ethereum utilization can going down because simply it can attract a new person into the ecosystem that wasn't, you know, coming in the ecosystem in the first place. That's what a lot of people think. It's like you have to come in and you have to pick this thing or that thing. And then, you know, you have to capture this user so they don't go there. So that's not necessarily true. People can, you know, dilute their utilization. And that's a lot of what's happening. But then also some things are drawing people in in ways that they may not have been blockchain users in the first place. And so it's not zero sum. It can actually be completely positive sum because blockchain can create create new wealth, and that wealth can now be value that can be transferred to other chains in a way that didn't exist in the first place. And another big misconception here in going on with that zero sum idea is that, you know, other blockchains are just going to completely die off and that we're going to have like one or two winners. I don't think that's actually true either, okay, because I think what's going to happen is we'll probably have some leaders and then we'll have, you know, a, a significant number of the chains that occupy different, you know, degrees of that market share and that inevitably some of them will die off for sure, but a lot of these other chains will stick around. And ultimately, I think this is good at the end of the day because it breeds competition in the ecosystem, um, which ends up being a better experience for the consumer in the long run. And so when you have all these things kind of competing for one another, we can actually create a better technology in the long run. All right. So that being said, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions here. I've got some ideas about where I think this space is headed. But at the end of the day, like I said, nobody knows for sure. And so what do you do with the uncertainty of this multi-chain future? Okay. So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about are, you know, people who are trying to get into this uh, on the 
technical side of things. That's primarily what I try to help you all do on this channel is actually, you know, change your career, get these skills, break into this industry, you know, you know, change your life by learning this stuff. So in the day, I would say this, like you definitely, especially if you're a beginner trying to learn new technology, you don't want to be kind of good at a bunch of different things. You want to be really good at one thing. And because Ethereum has so much going for it, it has so much network effect, it has so many developer tools, a rich developer ecosystem, that I highly recommend learning that, okay? Because even if there's something else that's trending and taking off, like it doesn't have a sophisticated developer ecosystem, you're going to have a way harder time getting started in something like that unless you're already an experienced programmer. So if you're just getting into blockchain, I highly recommend sticking with Ethereum because you can basically take a lot of the stuff that's, you know, if you can build for Ethereum, you can move that to many other environments as well. But at the end of the day, there's still lots of demand for putting applications on Ethereum in the first place. And also, you know, let's just say this dynamic does change later and you invest heavily into your skills. And let's say that space changes in three years. Well, if you've spent a lot of time learning something and you really gain mastery of it, it's going to be way easier for you to pick up the next thing. All right. So at the end of the day, what you want to do is become fundamentally sound and somewhere that has a lot of strong demand now. And then that can give you more options later. So trust me, I've learned multiple programming languages over the, my career as a developer. I've changed. I've adapted. I mean, I was a programmer already before I got into blockchain. So I made that transition. And man, am I glad I did. And I made that transition way faster than somebody who was just starting from scratch because I had a lot of programming experience and i would say that you just need to get that programming experience and go somewhere that's a really solid bet and ethereum's an insanely solid bet especially for beginners and so what should you do if you're thinking about this space like an investor or you're just trying to figure out like uh you know where where the space is headed so of course it's not financial advice but you know, at the end of the day you have to develop a strong thesis for yourself because if ultimately nobody knows what's going to happen you should try to piece together something that's rational and logical that's you know based on really solid evidence and human nature and what incentives are in place and then compare this to what other really smart people are thinking and you know be open to criticism and also be really quick to revise your thesis in light of new convincing information and so that's that's all of what I've done on this channel. And so if you have like constructive criticism on what you think the future is going to be like, and you think I'm like totally wrong, then, you know, leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll read through those. And if you have something that's actually constructive and convincing, then you might change my mind. But for now, that's where I think things are headed. So hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I actually become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.